the report itself isn't dated, but uh, I could read from it uh, a number of quotes that would uh, substantiate uh, roughly uh, what I said here as, as the experience of, of Central Michigan State. I hesitate to take more time at this moment on that, but I'll be glad to do it or show it to you and uh, to do it if, if that's what's desired as, as discussion proceeds. Incidentally, uh, John, in reply to uh, your uh, reading uh, there, the uh, last um, uh, couple sentences of uh, this article in the AGB uh, notes, uh, I think this uh, language here is, is quite uh, pertinent on the other side. It says, uh, and this is again uh, this um, uh, Dr. William Boyd speaking, the trend toward the movement of power from the campuses to new political educational capitals seems to me to be the most significant thing happening in higher education today, more important even than the economic problems which tend to preoccupy us. The trend is sometimes cited as ca a casual factor in uh, faculty unionism. It is almost surely a consequence as well. I'll conclude for the moment. Thank you. Now, if we, uh, unless you have particular comments of clarification, we'll take any questions you have, and you can address them to any one of the panel, me panel members, or you can address them uh, generally if you like. I would like for us to get the question uh, clarified before they answer, because we are getting it taped, and uh, we may not be able to hear someone from the back. Uh, maybe, I'm sorry. Be erased. You, you got an 18-minute section in the middle to be erased on. Yeah, we left, we, we have it out so that we don't even have to bother with it. It's already taken care of. Uh, maybe one of the panel members has some comments. Yeah. Uh, Reed? I'd like to ask John a question, and that's, uh, I, just, I just talked with um, John Connors on this bill just before I came tonight, and we, we talked about final offer arbitration, and apparently my understanding of it is different than uh, Jack's, and so can you tell me what, what am I missing, or what is he missing, or what's, what's the interpretation that the Senate had when they passed it? Well, the interpretation I had was, uh, like Jack, uh, that a final offer would be made, and that, that even though there may be certain points in that offer, uh, it, would be a, it would be a package. Would and now, uh, obviously, there's some, there's some uh, problem in interpretation, and, and if that isn't uh, the case, if every single item, um, uh, $10,000, uh, two weeks vacation, um, uh, 35 hours a week, all of the different items uh, on down uh, the list are considered separate, um, you know, we probably would have looked uh, again at that particular item. Well, I think it's the same way as, as you did. Uh, and uh, I would think uh, that um, uh, there would be, you know, uh, the, the, the thing to be do is to get them so that uh, you didn't have too many uh, separate items. I mean, put them together, uh, uh, and uh, that that would be the way of accomplishing. Because I think the bill specifically states that as much as we could research this, we felt this was one of the items that would add to the economic uh, welfare of the legal fraternity in the first year <coughs> of this bill if it were passed. <laughs> because it's not clear. If you read through it, uh, both interpretations, I think, are legitimate. It, the way it's written, it's not clear. Other comments on the panel? Then we can take questions then, uh, Jeanette. Yes, I, I think if there is an impasse between any two groups, uh, they call in arbitrators, and I think at this point, and this university supplies the number of arbitrators, I know of, of one anyway, and I think that that uh, one individual would, uh, might take exception to the point that he doesn't do a good job or doesn't think about 
uh, what he's leaving the parties with. Uh, arbitrators is a technical term as used in the bill that the attempt was to provide experienced, highly professional people uh, who were used to coming into a difficult situation and trying to find a resolution which would be acceptable uh, to both sides. Could, could I add something to that? And that's, again, if it gets to the point of arbitration, they're selecting between, or this, this panel of arbitration is selecting between two alternatives. And so it isn't as if they're pulling something out of the sky. It's they're picking something from, that is offered by different points of view within the educational community, within the whatever community we're dealing with. And so this is, so I, I do think that, that the interest in, in this particular case of education would be there. Just depends on how it's seen. John? question relates to the scope of negotiations yes. possible? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, maybe I could start out on that one. Uh, you might underscore Jack's comment about the legal profession in the first year. Uh, these are some of the questions that, that we're hoping that the per board will define more closely. They will have the experience of, of decisions of the NLRB, some of the decisions in other states that have uh, collective bargaining, public employee professional negotiations. And in those states, uh, I think they've, they've tried to limit it to, uh, as it says, wages, hours, and terms and conditions of employment, but uh, to exclude, say, whitewashing the brick on this wall. Uh, that could be, if you take it to extremes, a condition of your employment if you're required to teach in Lush Auditorium. Uh, but this has been in ex excluded in other states and, and under NLRB um, decisions. The, the color of the wall and some of these other uh, things are not generally considered as part of other terms and conditions of employment. The trouble that we face, what, what term do we use to indicate we want the employment relations discussed? Uh, because there are all sorts of, of uh, ideas with the regard to employment relations. There are all sorts of parts of employment relations. Uh, disability insurance. Uh, life insurance, term insurance, salaries, uh, the hours. Uh, you take uh, teachers in public schools, whether they must serve on three extracurricular activities after six o'clock at night, or whether they uh, have to serve lunchroom duty, or whether they get one free period a day to uh, catch up on their work. Some of these things that are considered or would be considered as part of other terms and conditions of employment. Others may have a further view on that. Well, you, uh, I mean, the, the language of the, of the statute, is that what you want? I mean, John knows that. Uh, but, but, but I mean, I thought maybe what he wanted was just what it says uh, uh, on the, in the bill itself on the thing. Uh, and it says, um, The public employer and the employee organization shall meet at reasonable times, including meetings reasonably in advance of the public employer's budget making process to negotiate in good faith with respect to wages, hours, and other terms and conditions of employment 
including terms authorizing dues checkoff for members of the employee organization and grievance procedures for resolving any questions arising under the agreement, which shall be embodied in a written agreement and signed by the parties. Such uh, obligation to negotiate in good faith does not compel either party to agree to a proposal or make a concession. Now, obviously, that recitation uh, is not exclusive. That is, I mean, it, it uh, cites examples or cites um, things, but it does not limit to those specifically mentioned. There's an umbrella clause in there and other terms and conditions of employment. Right, right. I was wondering if somebody could comment on, I guess you, the senator already had, on what he thought might be the type of thing. Well, the, the difficulty we found is how do you list? <coughs> how do you break it down? And many people say, why don't we put in economic measures? Uh, but all the decisions by NLRB and other uh, public uh, or other employment relations boards have indicated that this, this in itself covers the waterfront. In other words, you're not going to limit just by using economic because you can reduce almost anything to economics. I might make a comment that's pertinent in this connection in my judgment, and, and that is that uh, President Boyd, in his comments, uh, said that if there were to be a uh, collective bargaining uh, bill with reference to higher education, meaning particularly faculty, then it should be a separate bill because of the uh, various uh, differences uh, between, I mean to me, uh, to, to include uh, members of the university faculty uh, with uh, most other employees is, is just not, I mean, they just aren't the same uh, type of, of uh, people. They, they aren't employees and in a sense. They are a part of the governance of and determining the uh, course and future of higher education. And uh, that isn't the type of, of people you're setting this bill up for, really. You had a question? I'd like to repeat the question, but uh, it, it refers specifically to the voluntariness and the diffusion of authority in terms of the Board of Regents. Does that? Let me let me start off by saying yes, it does diffuse responsibility. Uh, it diffuses it diffuses the participation in making the decisions. That's what collective bargaining is all about. Uh, Let's face it, what the employer makes the decision now. The Board of Regents makes the decision, or the legislature, or the governor, in the end, makes the decision. And what collective bargaining is all about is we're saying we're carving out employment relations, the relations that particularly apply to, to uh, 
terms and conditions of employment for those employees, and we want to diffuse the power. We don't want to concentrate it, we want to diffuse it. I might take exception that the faculty or the employees at a university or in an agency have no concern with the quality of that institution. I think they do. Uh, second, I think that the per board, I think an, an employee organization, I think that the faculty or employees as a whole would have a very keen interest in the quality of this particular institution. I know that anyone can set up a set of facts which I would abhor in higher education or in any other department. Uh, you, could, uh, you could set up a set of facts of bringing in a, a national union that, is, that has a history of uh, embezzlement, has a history of all sorts of uh, strikes and shenanigans, uh, violence, and I would, I would say if that's what is incorporated in Senate File 531, I don't want any part of it. But my set of circumstances, I think looking around the state of Iowa at the type, of the general type of, em of employee organization we have in the private sphere, and the fact that we already have employee organizations active and working in the public sphere, the type of those employee organizations, their responsibility, their willingness to share responsibility with the employer on, uh, on a very responsive tone uh, sets the atmosphere in which I approve of Senate File 531. If I, if I could just expand on what John said. Under Section 21 of the bill, it, it lists guidelines that the panel of arbitrators may consider, such as uh, past collective bargaining contracts between parties, including the bargaining that led up to such contracts comparison of wages, hours, and conditions of employment of the involved public employees with those of other public employees during, doing comparable work, giving consideration to factors peculiar to the area and the classifications involved, and the interest and welfare of the public, the ability of the public employer to finance economic adjustments, and the effect of such adjustments on the normal standard of services. So this, this does give some guidelines, but it does say that uh, may consider, I'm not sure why they put may in such shall, but that's what it says. No, in the front. How is the per board created, and can you uh, move back out of a collective bargaining situation if you decide to? Which of you would like to? Uh, I can take the first part. I'm not sure. This, I'm not sure the second part. Is. But it's uh, the first part. It's uh, they're appointed by the governor and they're approved by the Senate, but two thirds of the Senate. John, can you get some of the second? Uh, I don't know I, that I can answer the second part uh, either, except that uh, any decision of the per board, uh, which is an administrative agency, and like any administrative agency, can be appealed to a district court and then up through the court system. If that is in response to your question. Yes, there's a one year. Yes, there's a provision for decertification. I think a one year waiting period, and then you can you can reverse the process. Any any employee can, and I I think uh, it says on the petition of of a public employee, and you can allege that a certified pub, uh, public employee organization um, as a representative does not represent the majority and that the petitioners do not want to be represented by an employee organization so that you go back in the same way you uh, um, went in in the first place. John. Uh, I would like to ask a few questions that might uh, define the size, or would probably the size, I know some of this would have to be defined uh, by the per board after the bill is passed, but I think it might be helpful to uh, get some people 
meeting for who would be the appropriate bargaining unit corresponding to the faculty and who would be defined as the employer. Uh, let me just ask some questions the way I, I think the way it probably would be. Uh, would the appropriate bargaining unit corresponding to the faculty be the full-time faculty or would part-time faculty be involved also? Presently it's even down to a third, is it not, as I read in the bill today? I don't know whether the, the two politicians would want to respond to that, but you know, really, this is going to be up to the per board, and I think that you know, for us to sit here and second guess uh, what they're going to come up with is is kind of very difficult. Well, it seems to me that pertinent, though, in this whole general uh, area, is the fact that as far as employees who are under the merit system is concerned they are covered statewide by one bargaining unit. And so it would seem to me that, that this idea that you're gonna, uh, that is as far as compatibility with a general uh, provision, that uh, provision of the bill anyway, why uh, uh, you uh, very well may be wishful thinking in, in thinking that it's gonna be a lot of little units. John, I think one of the problems comes <coughs> to just the definition, and this is what I think some people are trying to get at as far as, uh, and I, and I have to con say when I have to confess that when I'm dealing with this bill, I've spent my time on other bills. Collective bargaining has not been my my big deal. I'm working on another bill right now, but it's uh, in in talking with them, they're talking about defining supervisory personnel. And so I, um, a couple of weeks ago, I went up and I said to them, "Okay, we've got a head of a department or a chairman of a department, and he or she teaches some classes." But at the same time, he or she also has administrative responsibilities. Would he or she be classified as a supervisory personnel or uh, as, a, as an employee? And uh, his response at that time was, it's up to the per board. I, uh, I think we should have a little bit more direction as this is concerned. But this is, this is where it is right now. It's not the way I read it this afternoon. I read it this afternoon personally, then there was one third time it was covered, and supervisory was uh, identified concerning those people who hire, fire, make some determination of compensation, et cetera. Now, again, I don't, I don't know that that says a department head that it's in or out, but it, it does give some qualifications, uh, criteria for supervisory. Maybe I'm asking another unanswerable question, but uh, how about the graduate student It says students working as part-time public employees, less than 20 hours per week, are exempt. And so it depends upon the number of hours that they're involved. And one other thing that I'd like to throw in on that is that, again, this is a real hassle that, I, that I've got in, in dealing with, with the higher educational institutions, is that I know in some departments, and obviously this, this varies from departments, but um, there's a different amount of participation by the faculty. And I believe it's custom or tradition or rule or whatever you want to say that uh, professors evaluate the associate professors and the assistant professors as far as uh, moving up as far as rank is concerned. And one of these, uh, one of the um, considerations that the PERB board has to consider as far as defining whether one is a, a supervisory employee is whether one deals in, in promotions or not. And so this is, this is one thing, but again, it's up to the PERB board to decide. Question being, who is the employer? I, I hesitate in the in, in the uh, presence of a board of regents member, but uh, the regents could determine, and I I would expect if if the faculties at the various institutions were separate bargaining units, which they could be, uh, 
um, or different parts of the faculty. Uh, maybe the regents would want to uh, have them work with the administration. Uh, the regents would be the employer, however, or uh, in the end, the governor would be the employer, since the regents is, an, an, a, albeit an independent, but appointed by the governor. So it would be your impression then, uh, in a collective bargaining situation, that the representative from the faculty would be sitting on one side of the table and one of the regents on the other side. Their, yes, their representative would, would be the person. It, I think the administration would be. Don, the you had a university in the administration, you mean, Mr. John? What? You mean the university administration? Yes, yeah, excuse right. me. I mean, the university the administration. So the answer would be that yeah. the university administration would be well, the it would be both, probably. But, yeah. but it would be both, probably. Yeah. I, I think it would be because the, the Board of Regents would work well, through the university administrations at each of the university locations. They would be their representatives.
Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I'm surprised at, at your statement uh, that uh, you think this is the direction that it's going now. My impression is that it's uh, backwatering uh, considerably. That is, as far as, as what uh, the university faculties are doing now, I agree with uh, the fact that um, AUP, and you're talking now about the national organization, or? I'm talking about both, the uh, uh, When you referred to, uh, when you referred, referred to AUP initially, I thought you were speaking about the national organization. Then when you uh, mentioned the Iowa bill, uh, particularly why I just assumed that the national organization hadn't taken any action on the Iowa bill, so then I thought you were probably referring to the, to the um, uh, state uh, organization at, at the respective campuses. Then you're talking about just uh, at, at this university? Well, I'm talking both. I'm talking about mm -hmm. this university. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I, uh, I mean, uh, I, I'm aware of the fact that uh, the national organization is acting on this. I'm kind of going to what, what I prompt my initial uh, comment uh, in the same issue of the, of the Chronicle. Uh, that, uh, that as far as I'm concerned, the that faculties uh, uh, do uh, go along. Also, that is, in other words, uh, if we don't have uh, a headline for collective more bargaining faculties for faculties initially, uh, and and which I New would York say University. we could have uh, possibly by uh, different provisions, but not included in this bill because of the uh, things that I've mentioned before as to why they just aren't the same uh, creatures. Uh, but uh, in any event, uh, it seems to me that uh, the faculties have to be assured and should be assured and would be assured uh, that, uh, that they're uh, not being involved that would in no way uh, work to their financial detriment. That is, I, I, it's my uh, feeling that if they do not, uh, are not included do, uh, or do not organize, then it's up to the uh, Board of Regents to be as tough as they have to be to be sure that the faculties do not lose ground, relatively speaking, as far as their uh, salaries are concerned. And I, I made this point at least twice uh, in the uh, last uh, meeting of the board. Could I respond yeah. to that for just a second? Maybe I'm playing the, the devil's advocate or maybe I'm just being a cynic in the answer to your question. But it's, you know, one answer that, that some people would reply to that is that in the, to the question of, why are these various organizations promoting collective, collective bargaining? You mentioned possibly because of the fact that it's, our current system isn't working, which in some instances I would very much agree with you on. Uh, other people would, would submit to you that uh, it was, these organizations are promoting it merely for the continuance of their organization and, and the well-being of their organization. I don't know whether that's valid or not, but that, that is a, an argument that is, is offered in, in rebuttal to the, to the No, no, I'm not arguing that at all. <laughs> well, that is not correct. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I was saying that, that I think sometimes the argument has been advanced to me that it's, uh, and, and I would agree with your contention that it's, uh, that our system is not working right now in the, uh, in the promotion for for say better better salary increases because if you just look at the um, look at the governor's budget uh, right now, the it's an offer to 6.5 percent salary increase for everybody. Well, that looks that looks okay. At least it's approaching what it should be as far as because you can get different different points of view as far as what the uh, cost of living increase was. But it's uh, nevertheless uh, when you look at the merit system, they each have their their steps. And uh, some of the schools each have their steps as they move up the, the promotion ladder, meaning elementary and secondary. But the, uh, the Regents Institution, they don't. It's just this, this annual salary increase. And so I, I think right there that we've got a discrepancy within our, within our budget here in Iowa that we need to look at. But I would say that there are some people that argue in rebuttal to, to what you said, that it's uh, this bill is, uh, or this idea of promotion for collective bargaining 
is uh, the promotion of certain organizations who are looking out primarily for the well-being of the organization itself instead of the well-being of the members of that organization. That's just maybe being a cynic or maybe something being the devil's advocate, I don't know. Uh, j just one clarification on what Reed said. Uh, he, he's, uh, he's entirely correct, but the Board of Regents did ask mm -hmm. for an 8% uh, increase for faculty and 6.5% uh, for and that wasn't uh, mistreating the the uh, non-academics either because they had had uh, some additional gains uh, uh, earlier. One more, and then we'll go. Let me say, could I sp respond to that just momentarily? Uh, we have found, and I can say this on the basis of my own experience in the legislature, and that is you don't uh, uh, always get uh, uh, the most money by asking for the most astronomical figures uh, because you uh, build up a considerable amount of ill will uh, as a result of uh, being what uh, the legislature, and I was in there, and I know, uh, from that basis uh, that uh, they um, feel like if you aren't being realistic, if you aren't considering their other problems and needs, and I agree with them uh, that we should, uh, then uh, they're liable to cut you back further than they would on the basis of a realistic request. I'm going to move to a question <coughs> over here and I'll come back to it. I think one message that I've heard several directions Is there some model other than the industrial model that we can apply to education? Is that a fair summary of your? I see Jack handing me the <laughs> mic. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hand you mine too. Is that because you're not political? <laughs> no, no, that's because I don't have an answer. <laughs> I can only stab uh, at the answer. I don't think there's going to be a separate higher education bill. Uh, I think we'll either have this bill or we won't have any bill out of the legislature this year. One of the reasons, and uh, I've, I've just learned some of the history in the, in the past few weeks. This is not a, a new question. This question has been around for many years, and in fact there have been bills in the legislature for the last six years. Uh, those bills have dealt with different sections. Uh, one bill handled teachers separate from state employees. Another bill combined them. Uh, both forms of bills just sat there. And as I was explaining to Reed as we were discussing this coming up today, it's my feeling, my conclusion on the basis of this, that everyone, every employer, every group considers himself or itself to be unique. Uh, what all of the pressures to have separate bills or to include them all in one, if there are separate bills in existence, is an attempt to defeat collective bargaining. What it seems to me is that we ought to decide whether we want collective bargaining or not. If we want collective bargaining, let's pass a bill to provide for collective bargaining. And 
higher education can decide whether they, whether they want it or not. Now you see, what, what's interesting here is that the Board of Regents would like to make that decision, or the governor make that decision. Now they're the employers. They would like to make that decision, and certainly I can't blame them. Uh, if, if I were in a position of being an employer, I expect I would uh, be very interested in how I set up the structure for communication between my employees and myself. Um, but what we're trying to do is set up that structure, and, and the Senate, at least, took the position that we ought to treat all state and local employees, public employees, uh, the same, giving them the option to participate under this bill or not, depending on how they agree or did not agree. I, uh, I certainly cannot guarantee what the Senate will accept from the House. I know that the House will make a number of amendments, some of which we may accept, some we may not. I think that if, if the decision is to cut off a significant segment, and I can't say that just cutting off higher education, but if, if the effort is made to cut off a significant segment of employees from this bill, we will end up with no bill. John, may, may I respond? I think uh, that uh, it's pretty clear that, that your initial uh, sort of inference that uh, all employers, you know, would like to be exempted because we aren't asking uh, for exemption of uh, the uh, rank and file employee at all. I that is, uh, I mean, in other words, w we are, are saying these people, faculty members, are in basically the, the class of a supervisor or in, in the class of, of uh, somebody that, that is in policy making position. And we're just saying uh, that this, because uh, we uh, as an employer are not asking for uh, exclusion of, of the same people as are being covered by other state agencies. My remarks stand corrected <laughs> on that. I know that, uh, Ray. Yeah. And I think my only point was that, that everyone has talked, and I, at the time of passage of Senate File 531, uh, uh, Many people wanted to be excluded because they were uh, they were professional employees, and you're you're noticing the same amendment over in the over in the House that appeared in the Senate. Uh, there's a great difficulty in how you draft the definition of professional employee. Seems very good right on the surface to say, well, we ought to separate the professional employees. We all know who are professional employees. The engineers and the lawyers and the, the, these professional employees ought to go over here. But how do you define it in a bill? You end up defining it by drawing a class, an economic, educational elite. And when you put that into legal language and put it into a bill, you think about 20 times before you enact it into law to draw a class distinction. Well, John, Thank you. I think one of the things is the dispersion of power. Uh, I think the question has to be asked, uh, do faculty uh, professionals have sufficient power to carry on the, their half of the communication cycle without organization, which would give them an additional uh, source of power? And if you feel that they're not going to be outstaffed as far as expertise and informa information uh, that they can protect themselves individually and thus, you know, the organization probably will function the way it is. But if you don't feel that they have that power now within the organization, then the only, the only route you can go is collective bargaining. And I don't know whether it would be in the language of 531, but it has to be something very similar to this. Well, in response to that question further, uh, Dr. Boyd did give uh, and uh, they were recorded here by, in these notes to what extent they're a full recording, but he listed five things uh, that should be uh, included uh, in a bill uh, that relates uh, to higher education. That is, I mean, in other words, uh, he didn't leave us just with the uh, uh, 
negative about the affirmative in it. Uh, and I have these here, and I, I don't know if you want to hear them or not, but uh, this time I know it's getting short, but, but at least we do have some, some specific proposals that should go into a bill related to it. I've, I've got one general comment that I would like to make, and I, I know I've come on very strong tonight with regard to 531 and the, and the faculty. I just would say that I have very serious doubts myself whether the faculty uh, should go into collective bargaining here at Iowa State or at any university. Uh, to me, however, I've put my faith in the, in the faculties arriving at that decision themselves. Uh, I think that the faculties could arrive at that decision. It depends on how the faculty's communication channel is with its own uh, governance system. Uh, I, uh, I see and I understand some of these difficulties and problems, and I'm hoping that all of you will weigh that as you think about this decision. Well, may I say one word in response to John there? Yes. <laughs> one, and then we'll take a <laughs> uh, That isn't fair for me to talk so much, I realize. But, but John, the problem with that is that, that it is a small minority of the faculty uh, that are vociferous, and uh, as long as they can get it going, they'll get it going, and then it'll drag everybody down to the same level. And, and that's why I would like to see them protected uh, until at least the need arises, if they ever if they ever feel that they're getting a the raw deal as a result of it, I'm satisfied that they can get the legislature to give it to them uh, with, with a bill on the books anytime. And uh, I, I just feel like that saving their professional uh, stature is, is significant and that they shouldn't be in a position where they're going to be drawn down uh, to the level of, of the uh, ne'er-do-wells. Suddenly I've got four or five hands. I need to go back here. <laughs> Thank you. 
I think we're ready for your question. a bit ago that uh, I couldn't undertake to read at the moment because I thought maybe the time wasn't desired to be spent that way of uh, five different specific provisions that uh, <coughs> would be proper for inclusion in a higher education uh, related <coughs> bill as opposed to one uh, for general uh, bargaining. Now with reference to the fact that you said I said, I'm saying quoting what uh, somebody with this experience and learned it the hard way uh, said. Now, I, if you question what he said, uh, that uh, I can't uh, 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 I can't establish beyond the fact that he said it. But uh, to deny on the basis of uh, of, of an assumption something that somebody has said, uh, the president of a university, the state university in Michigan, has said uh, has been his experience. Uh, seems to me to be just a little ill-founded. Now, the, the one point that you made that I uh, that bothered me a bit myself uh, was this tenure thing. But uh, actually, uh, there is an answer to that too. What the man said was that he felt that the Iowa bill, as written, would give immediate tenure, instant tenure. In other words, it would give anybody. Uh, that was on the faculty the effect of having tenure. Now, what uh, the uh, getting away from tenure is, the, the losing of tenure, is when you get in the bargaining process and for a few extra dollars you say we will give up tenure or we will let some people uh, not have tenure uh, and maybe you go to a contractual relationship instead of tenure uh, and there's where you start losing your tenure. Just like the University of Hawaii says right here, faculty union at University of Iowa or uh, University of Hawaii trims tenure, and that's where you're getting into that. I would respond. Uh, I heard most of the comments that that day from President Boyd, and I think he left us. He left me with a, a, a real empty feeling after it all because he closed as I recall maybe maybe he didn't close but he said if if he had his druthers he'd do away with collective bargaining at higher education institutions he said however I wouldn't work for Central Michigan unless we had collective bargaining so I don't know where where it where it is uh, and here's a man who's looked at it from both sides and he finds he, he said to himself it makes his job a lot easier so it's uh, a real difficult process, and I think that's part of why we're here tonight. You had a question over here.
No, it's uh, of the votes cast. Yes, the majority of it. Says that every every member of the bargaining unit shall have a chance, have an opportunity <coughs> to vote, and that 50 percent of the votes cast. Did you have a question? I expect the question uh, you, uh, you state is that the ultimate responsibility lies in the legislature to appropriate the funds. And uh, without those funds appropriated, uh, what's to bargain? The bill uh, tries to approach an answer on, on this by saying that the, the groups will bargain, the um, employee organization and the employer will bargain in good faith, come to an agreement, and then uh, attempt in good faith, both of them, to secure the appropriation. I would just give you the experience that I've seen with the merit <coughs> system. The legislature, I don't know how they tried to re resolve the problem 10, 15, 20 years ago. We didn't have quite as many employees back at that time. But the legislature now funds the Merit Commission's recommendation for the merit, um, uh, for the merit system, basically without question. Now, obviously, uh, there will be some questioning of contractual agreements by employee groups and employers throughout the system. But I look for basic uh, understanding and adoption of the contractual agreements arrived at by employer organizations and em employee organizations and employers. Just as we are in the process of, of becoming commonplace with the adoption of the Amer uh, Merit Commission's uh, recommendations on salary schedules for merit employees. Uh, uh, the size of the wall and, whether, and the uh, date of its construction. I, I think this is up, I don't think it will be included, frankly, but it's, it's up to the, to the uh, Public Employment Relations Board whether that's a legitimate bargaining uh, question. Uh, maybe if you're in, a, if you're in um, Botany Hall here and been condemned for 40 years, uh, Maybe it is part of it, but uh, if, if your building is, is uh, 30 years old and you'd like to have a new building, or if your building is 50 years old and yet it's still usable, um, I don't think that that, that would be considered part of, of uh, the conditions of your employment. Um, but then I could be wrong. We'll take two more questions, and then we'll give the panel a chance to summarize if they like, and uh, then we'll quit. You have a question?
Well, Ab, I, I think that, that the listing, and Reed, didn't you read off the listing of the, of the items? Or all is one considered unit. In, uh, in but there's some the geographic uh, uh, distribution that makes a difference unit, between the, the common interests into consideration the groups. Along with other relevant factors, the principles of efficient administration of government, the existence of a community of interest among public employees, and there we, we have specifically the idea of professional employees like the engineer, and uh, a common community of interest among uh, groups of employees. I, you know, you're hypothetical. I can understand your hypothetical, but like I said, there, there are an infinite variety of hypotheticals that c could occur, uh, especially when you bring in to that the variety of types of legislatures and 10 years from now, what kind of issues are the legislature uh, or is the legislature going to want to deal with? Uh, are they going to want to deal with the salaries of sociology professors? Uh, are they going to want to deal with uh, uh, other issues uh, like uh, the environmental questions that we're trying to deal with now? No answer to the hypothetical question that I come up with. Maybe other members. Yes, sir. Last question. Uh, does this bill provide the normal safeguards uh, to employees that they particularly for uh, collective bargaining and union Yes, it does. It has two different sections on employee rights and employer rights. Uh, and unless you want to go into details, yes, it does. It, it gives you all the protections that uh, you'd normally find. And I think we've, we've listed prohibited practices and, and their violations, yes. Uh, I won't ask for any further questions. Uh, we're beyond my bedtime. <laughs> and, uh, so let me, make, uh, let me make a couple of comments about the material we've seen here, and then uh, if any of the panel members have a comment, we'll give them a chance, and uh, then we'll turn it back to John Clem. First of all, this committee has developed some materials, and as well as a bibliography or two, we have a... Uh, through the auspices, uh, through the kind efforts of the president of Michigan State, they've documented their whole process, and we'll put these things on file in the library. We'll try to announce just where. If not, you can check in the library and find where. We'll also have a tape of tonight's panel discussion, and to the extent that we were able to capture them, the questions that were asked, and you can listen to that, or maybe some of your colleagues will be interested in it. I invite you, uh, for those of you not on faculty council, to communicate with faculty council members if you think that there is something that the council ought to do uh, or some particular uh, approach that should be taken. Uh, I will thank my fellow committee members, uh, Nathan Dean, Gannett Bonin Camp, Chuck Ben, John.